Hey, thanks so much, Carol, for being with us and giving up a little bit of your time to share your experience in the Momentum program. It would be great, actually, if you could just share a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do and how you help people in the world, please. Sure, no problem. Nice to be here, Amanda, and thank you for inviting me. Um, I have two businesses. One is the accounting firm, Value Business Accounting. And the other one is a business called bookkeepingforeveryone.co.uk. And that is a website that um, connects bookkeepers with business owners. So it's everything you need to know about bookkeeping. It has a lot of free resources on there. And if you're looking for a bookkeeper as, as an accountant, for example, there's lots of freelance freelance bookkeepers to choose from on there that I use them as an accountant as well. Amazing. Fab. But that's not the business that you came to me for help with, is it? No. Can you share a little bit about why you joined the Momentum Programme and what your problems were at the time? Yeah, so Value Business Accounting actually is a pivoted business at the beginning of lockdown because before lockdown, what I was doing was going out to clients. So I had a, a range of clients and because they wanted me to, I'd physically go to their locations. And they were different. There was interior design. There's a lot of medical businesses as well and that was fine I was sort of like kind of running it down I'm 64 now so I was thinking oh you know maybe I'll um, retire in three or four years time and then along came coronavirus and I literally lost all but one of my clients overnight because either I couldn't go there or they shut down completely and one went into liquidation so I had zero income to speak okay. of, apart from one little client. So I had been thinking about going uh, more digital and that really, I, I, then I had to stop working, which I wasn't ready to do, or I had to reinvent myself basically. So I went for the reinvention option. <laughs> amazing, amazing. And what, what did you feel was your problem? So you, you went with reinvention, um, yeah. you, at lockdown, you had no clients because yeah. unfortunately liquidation left you or that yeah. kind of thing. What were some of the struggles that you were having? Because we've only been working together for a short time. You had yeah. struggles before we joined uh, yeah. together, didn't we? I did. So, so what I found was I suddenly had to completely recreate my accounting business as well as finalise the other business, bookkeepingforeveryone.co.uk. Um and the thing, I wasn't quite ready to do either, mm -hmm. but then I had nothing else to do, so I had no choice. Um, and the, what I knew, what I absolutely knew I would have to do is to completely use social media. So I knew the accounting business was going to be 100% virtual. It was going to be 100% digital, digital. So I did spend quite a bit of time actually on reflection on the wrong thing but the first thing that I spent time on was the websites and the tech stack I had to put together and all the making sure the infrastructure was there to sell yeah which actually after I met you which I'll talk about a bit later was actually the wrong way to do things but that's where I started and after that, or during that, I started thinking, right, social media, I know I need to do social media. I hate social media personally. Yep. Wasn't on LinkedIn, wasn't on Facebook. Uh, I did use Twitter a bit, never been on Instagram. So I thought, shit, I'm gonna have to really learn about social media now. So I went onto YouTube and you know, there's nothing you can't learn on YouTube in my experience. <laughs> Yep. So I just sort of um, went and looked at social media 101 and, you know, how to use Facebook, how to use LinkedIn. And of course, there's a whole load of contradictory information on there. But what I was after at that stage was the absolute basics. I mean, I, I knew nothing about even setting an account up in any of them. And I had no money to pay anybody else either because I had no income. So I started um, doing that and I did it mostly on the other business, the bookkeepingforeveryone.co.uk um, because I knew my audience, I knew what I was doing on there, I knew who I was trying to attract um, and I did use Facebook to some extent on that. So that was kind of okay. And then I realized that I was, I got this great tech stack. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I knew what I was doing with what my products and services were, and it, yep. it was all beautifully set up. But shit, I haven't got any clients. <laughs> yep. I get that. So, so that's you, where I was when I found you. 
Yeah, and it's the wrong way round. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely the wrong way round. But I had no concept of that being the wrong way round. And I think most people don't have that concept. I think if you're already set up and, and you've got your business exactly how you want it, mm -hmm. which I would question whether most people do. I think there's a handful, a few, few accountants that would be in that stage. Um, mm -hmm. Then it's fine to sort of add marketing in later. But if you're if you're not at the stage where you really want to be and, and your business is not how you want it to be, then on reflection, put marketing in a lot earlier would be my amazing, amazing. Yes. And with regards to you putting together your tech stack, uh, being pretty confident in the fact that you've got something that you take to market. Yeah. What was the knock-on effect of not having those clients at that time? How, how was life? So you I, had no, I had no income for six months. Right, okay. Or well, possibly even longer. No, about six, about six months, yeah. seven months possibly. Yeah. Um, I was lucky in that I got a bounce back loan, but it took forever, absolutely forever. So I was really struggling. And I did um, qualify for universal credit for a few months, but I mean... That's not that wasn't even enough to pay the rent so you know great so I used what I did was use all my savings every penny I had went on developing the business okay. and then when the bounce back, bounce back loan finally came through that was great because that enabled me to grow how I needed to amazing so was it about six months before we got together and you joined Momentum what what was that time no, um I've been with you now four months Oh, man. So, wow, that went quickly. I know, didn't it? I know, that's what I thought. I thought it was about six weeks. Wow. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm still stuck on about week seven, six or seven of what I'm doing. But yeah, it's actually four months from beginning to end. Um, so that would be so November, October, September, August I joined. Okay. So I had no income from March. Okay until October so I think that's seven months so yeah. you kind of came in the middle of it so August I joined and October it really started flowing okay. so really two or three months from nowhere bear in mind that I had no income coming in at all apart from one small client and had done nothing about building that side of the business yeah I'll reflect on that yeah, and it and being, it being 2020. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and businesses out there. And, you know, before, when, like, for example, the bookkeeping business, I was totally confident that, that, would, that there was a need for that, there would be an audience for that. And then, of course, I had to launch it in lockdown. I thought, well, I, don't, I really don't know what's going to happen now. Like everybody else, you know, is it going to work? Is it going to work? Actually, it's fine. But, you know, so I did have some income from that, actually. But that's just sitting in that other business. I don't take it out of that other business. Um, yeah. Sorry, I forgot what the question was. There. was that's it? okay. That's okay. So, what would be really useful is if you could let us know a little bit about what life is like now. So, you've been in momentum for four months. You started yeah. to get momentum after about two months. Yeah. Um, what, what's life like now on a, on a weekly basis for you? Um, it is doing the program. Do, if I get up, I wake up, the first thing I do is the momentum program because it works. It does work. So every day I will post something yep. on LinkedIn. Every day I will make comments on people's posts. And every day I now outsource my um, initial contacts on LinkedIn. So every day that's done. I don't do that now. Um, and the rest of the day I spend having conversations with clients. I have appointments booked in for discovery calls or audition calls, um, and then appointments booking for the strategy call, and then client work now as well. So. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. How many clients have you got in the Momentum program since you started working with me? I've got one, two, three, or five. Five new clients? Yeah, five Excellent. new clients. Excellent. And that's as a direct result of doing the strategy? Uh, one of them was my hairdresser, so not as a direct result. But, okay. but because I was telling him about that, actually, I was telling him about how he needed to, because I could tell everybody else how they need to do it now. Yeah. Um, he was interested in what I was doing. So that, indirectly, it did come about. because Amazing. Of that. 
Amazing. And if there were some key points that you could say that you've really taken from the program, so it's not just a program about LinkedIn. I don't want people to think that, you know, it's a LinkedIn yeah. training program. It's more than that. Yes. Um, yeah. What would you say were some key things that you have got from the program, whether it be um, like learning or whether it be how you feel about the business, all that kind of thing would be amazing. Oh, there's lots, actually, I have to say. I think the most powerful thing is the thing you get us to do right at the beginning. Knowing who your client is. Absolutely knowing who your client is. I kind of knew that already because I knew who I wanted to work with, <coughs> but I didn't have it in the detail that I then had it. So that was really powerful because I think that makes all the difference yes. Yes. to the rest of your marketing if you know who your audience is. Yeah. Um, so that was one thing. Another thing was that social media takes a lot longer than you think it's going to take, and just to keep going, just to keep going, because I went through a slump. Yeah. Um, not because I didn't think the program was going to work, because I always thought it was going to work, but just because hey, it's 2020 and everyone goes through slumps, right? You just oh, don't totally. feel it. Yeah. You just don't feel it sometimes. So sometimes it was really hard. But even when I was feeling like that, the one thing I did do each day, even if I didn't do anything else was the momentum program. I yeah. just kept it going and kept it going. I didn't feel like it. I wasn't feeling it. I was feeling quite negative, which is unusual for me. But I think, you know, this year that happens and I just kept going. And that's a big takeaway, just to keep going, just keep doing yeah. what you teach everyone to do and it Absolutely. will pay off. Yeah, and you get momentum, hence the and Yes, definitely. And, and you do get momentum. It just... It will happen when it happens. You just have to keep going until you get to that point. And then, of course, when it happens, that's another learning point, don't stop. You have to keep going as well to keep it going. Although yeah. you can outsource it by then, a lot Absolutely. of it. So. Absolutely. Um, what would be great is we, we hold Q&A calls, as you know, because you have been really diligent in making sure that you come to them. What would you say to anyone about the Q&A calls? What are they like? How much support do you feel that you get from the programme in that way or that kind of thing, please? Yeah. Uh, I think the Q&A calls are essential. So I always, I do always try and make everyone, sometimes I can't, um, but pretty much, as you say, I am always there. And it's blocked out in my diary, Tuesday at 10, Thursday at 4. Yeah. It's blocked out for all the next year, even though I don't know, it's just ongoing. So no one can make an appointment with me at that time. So Tuesdays and Thursdays are my audition calls for clients, but they can't have me at those times unless something dramatic happens. Yeah. Um, so I make a commitment to it and I think we can all be don't really have time because it's easy to put off things like that mm. they, they're the least important in a way you know they're the easiest to put off but I although I might put off some others I don't put off the Q&A call unless I absolutely have to so what I what I think is really good about that is not only do we get you twice a week being positive because you're always super positive, which is really good when you're not feeling great sometimes. Um, you can ask any questions that you need to ask and you always answer them. You always take as much time as it, as it needs, which is fantastic. And the other thing now that I'm feeling now is that very much, there's a lot of interaction between the people in the program. Um, and we're doing, you know, we're having kind of conversations between us. I did a webinar last week on some subject everyone was interested in, and that went down really well. So there's a real community sense of community now, which in this year particularly is so important. So, you know, even if I don't have any questions or I don't have any burning things to say, I still always, if I can, come on, sometimes I'm a bit multitasking at the same time. That's okay. That's okay. It's the showing up. It's, exactly. It is very much about the showing up. Absolutely. And um, some, sometimes someone will raise a question that I hadn't thought of, and I think, oh, yeah, that's a really interesting point, and I'll ask another question on it. So it's always valuable, always valuable. Amazing, amazing. And, and actually, I'm super grateful that you're part of the community because you bring huge value to thank the community. You. So thank you, Carol, because you are there supporting other members as well. And as you say, I thought it was only weeks that you've been in the programme, but four months in. But <laughs> after those four months, but after those four months, you, you understand the programme, you know what you're yeah. doing, and yeah. you're helping other people. So yeah. you're paying back to those who are just joining the programme. Exactly. And um, I'm, I'm happy to do that because so many people help me. When, when I was struggling to begin with, um, one way or another. So, you know, what goes around comes around, doesn't it? You, you need to give back, I feel. 
Amazing, amazing. So if there was uh, like one key lesson that you've got from the Momentum program and working with us, what would you say it would be? Keep going. Keep doing what you need to do so you get momentum so it pays off. Yeah. Don't stop for any reason whatsoever, even if you've got all the excuses in the world. Just keep doing it because it does pay off. And when it starts paying off, it's really good. It's great. It's, yeah. it's so exciting. It's worth just keeping it going. You know, it's not something I've, I feel. It's not something you can just really do occasionally when you feel like it. Not if you want it to really work. Yeah, exactly. It's, it is. It's the compound effect kicks in. Yeah. And that's something I talk about in the program. Yeah. About the compound effect. Um, you have to commit to it. You have to commit to it if you want the results, like most things in life, I suppose. Yeah. So listening to you today, some of the things that I'm understanding is, one, don't focus on processes. Get your marketing going so you can get clients first. That would be a key thing. Another one is the compound effect. Keep going with it. And the third thing that I've heard is that when it starts, the compound effect really starts kicking in. It works very, very well. Yeah. But even if you're from a standing start yeah. where you, you haven't got any clients at all, yeah. the program works for you. So you yeah. can either be established or you can be a starter. Absolutely. Yeah, because I was essentially a starter. Yeah, exactly. I had to, re I had to pivot my business completely. Yeah. yeah. But one thing, just, just feedback for me as why you are an ideal client is you've been super committed. You've come to all the Q&A calls. You give as much as you ask, which is really amazing. Um, and I, I truly believe that one of the reasons why you have success is because you're out there giving value. And Carol, I think that's awesome. So thank you thank very you. much. No, thank you for that. Because you know, when you, when you get those, you, you get vampire clients and then you get the really nice clients. And when you get the really nice clients, you're like, that's very good. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. That makes my life easy. You jump out of bed and you're excited to work with them. That's that kind of thing. Um, so if anyone was on the fence about joining Momentum, if they're like, oh, it's a bit, you know, I, it's outside my budget, I'm a startup, or I'm not sure, what, what advice would you give them? I think it depends on what they want. If they, if they really, really want to grow their business and they want better quality clients and they want to be successful on whatever those terms are for themselves, you have to find the money. I mean, I had no money. I had no money and it was definitely, definitely 100% outside of my budget. But I knew that I had to make that commitment. And I also knew that one client would cover the cost, you know, so, which it has, but it was very hard. And I was thinking, oh God, you know, I'm not sure if the payment's going to go through this one. I've got to jiggle things around so much to make sure it doesn't bounce for Amanda. But it didn't, and it was okay. I just found the money. And I think you just, you have to forget paying for other things, forget eating or anything, you know, if you can't afford food. <laughs> don't worry about food. Yeah, don't worry about, you know, it's not like we're out there spending money on so social life or anything, isn't it? So I think you just have to find the money. Okay. And if you want to grow the business. I mean, my business would not be where it is now if I hadn't found the way to pay for it when I had no money. Yeah. It wouldn't, there's just no way. I'd still be plodding along and I might have, you know, I might have made some progress, but nothing like the progress that I've made in the program. Amazing, amazing. And then for making the decision about who you were gonna get help from, why did you choose me? Why did you choose Oomph? What was it that made you go, actually, do you know what? I haven't got the money, but I am going to invest in yeah. Amanda and, and the programme. Yeah, there's definitely, there was definitely a process to that. What happened was that I was being contacted by quite a few people offering marketing, and I wasn't kind of feeling it with most of them. Uh, particularly, there was one guy who kept phoning me, and I just didn't like him. I have to be honest, I just did not like him. And, you know, he was hassling me quite a bit. So I was sort of open to the idea, but I wasn't feeling it with people that were talking to me. And then, I don't know how I found you originally. I, don't, I can't remember the process that happened. Probably I knew an accountant that had mentioned you or you yeah. turned up in someone's feed or something. And I thought, well, that sounds interesting. And I remember your, your oomph crew picture and everything because you kind of look different it's like who's that woman <laughs> she looks fun sort of thing so, so 
I, and then once I saw you once, I couldn't stop seeing you. You were everywhere then. I got you. And you, because you offered a load of free content, I thought, well, I'll just try, I'll just see what she's got to say. And actually, what you were saying was completely resonating with me. And because you specialised in accountants, that was a huge thing for me. Just like you say, the ideal client scenario. You were talking to me. Uh, and I did sign up to all the free content. So I signed up to so much free content that I then felt guilty about I needed to join the program. <laughs> because I could see the value by then. I, you know, there was so much great free stuff. I would recommend, actually... If anybody hasn't watched all your free content out there, to watch it for sure. Just go through and spend a day watching everything because it was so valuable and it really was a great introduction to what who you were and what you were offering. Without that, it would have been a much harder leap. Yeah, of course. Yeah, to work to joining. But the because you're so good at putting the content out there that's completely relevant and completely useful. Yeah. So, so, oh God, it's me again. No, <laughs> so guilty. You better pay me some money. Yeah. <laughs> it was like that. It really was. Yeah. Because no. I got a call, I think, um, from one of your staff at some point. I wasn't quite ready at that point. And um, so I'd said no at that point. And then I kept doing the free stuff. It's like, mm, really, I need to pay you some money now. No, it's great. And it's one of those things that I teach, isn't it? It's about just yeah. showing up, sharing yeah. value and, you know, being yeah. there for people. And yeah. some of them will join you in, in you know, in yeah. your program or as, as a client. And then sometimes you'll find that they just keep on taking the free stuff because yeah. the time isn't right for them. Exactly. And that's absolutely fine as well. And what's interesting is when I ask my clients, why me and why now? They'll all say, oh, I just kept seeing your name everywhere. You know, I just kept seeing your messages. I just kept seeing your posts. So it's the same. It works. It, it works. works. For it me, as well work. as it work for you. I call it, yeah. I call it being a niche celebrity. Yeah. So for your niche, you're seen as a celebrity. Yeah. Um, and my son gets that totally. So he talks about I'm famous. And my daughter's like, she's not famous. She's not on TikTok. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's like, yeah, but I am to a select few. I am exactly. Few. Exactly. That's and right. it's, it's really, that's quite a nice feeling because you know you're putting the right content out there and you're talking to the right people and, yeah. and they appreciate it as well. So, yeah. That's great. What does the future look like for Carol? I'm really positive about next year, actually. I really am. Um, I've kind of cancelled this year. Well, I've not cancelled it, but I, like I've cancelled Christmas, for example. I'm just not doing Christmas. I will be working over Christmas. But um, next year is very much, I'm now uh, doing my own cash flow reporting and working out where I want to be and doing your, what's it called, reverse engineering thing. Yeah. And so I now need to take on three new clients each month throughout next year. So I've projected that I'm doing that um, and then projected that the following year. I want to, What I really want to do is to build up the business so I can either sell it in three months or completely step back and continue to manage it yeah. without... You know, my, my plan always has been not to be doing the number crunches so much, yeah. but to do the business development yeah. and use freelancers for the number crunching. So I'll, I'll oversee. So I do business advisory work. I do uh, virtual FD work, that type of thing. So I will work with the clients still. Yeah. Yeah. But when it comes to doing the bank rec, somebody else will do that. Excellent. So you're putting then the plan in place where I say 550K in three years, three yeah. clients a month get yeah. to that stage and then you can decide either to sell it or have one of your team take over yes or... exactly that exactly because I, I do want to I mean I love doing what I'm doing but and I don't I can't see that would ever stop working to be honest I'd always do something yeah but I don't I don't want to do all the compliance work I knew that right from the beginning I didn't want I mean I am doing it at the minute because I need to be doing it at the minute um but my plan is not to be doing any compliance work and to step back further and just develop the business either for sale or for sale then or for sale in the future. So that's my Brilliant. plan. So you've I'm gone from, that side of it. Yeah. So you've gone from being an accountant to being a business owner as yeah, well. Definitely. Which definitely. Is... I've had a big mind shift in momentum. Um and also on positivity. You know, and confidence. I mean I'm pretty confident anyway, I have to say, but <laughs> but I 
Well, and the reason I'm confident now is because I know it works and I'm secure in knowing my plans are achievable and I can achieve yeah. them. And I didn't yeah. have that. I didn't have that clear, the clarity of where I was going. I kind of knew where I wanted to go, but I didn't know how to get there in as much detail as I do now. Amazing. My favorite saying, when you're clear, it takes away the fear. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. It's brilliant. Excellent. Thank you so much. Is there anything else that you want to share before we wind up our conversation today? Uh, I don't think so. I think I covered the main, the main points. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Carol. Really appreciate it. You've been an absolute pleasure to help. Um, and I'm looking forward to helping you hit that half a million in three years. Yeah, can't wait. So, uh, um, momentum is there for you forever. So uh, that's that's the key thing. And you can keep coming to the Q&A calls. And I want you to you know, get where you want to be. And yeah. I'm excited to help you on that journey. Lovely. So, and thank, thank you, you for, thank you for changing my life. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> my, wow. Business, my business life. Your business life, absolutely. Um, well, and thank you for being part of mine. It's been an absolute pleasure and I look forward to working together moving forward, which is great. Thanks, Carol. Thanks, Amanda.